under God by Rajiv Menon. You know, Rajiv Menon is actor. He's acted in many movies like Asal and all that. And he's written his first book, Thunder God. It's a total work of fiction. It's not a definitive work on the Lord Indra and thing. It's a fictionalized version. It's one thing I can say. I've read part of it, and it's very fast, very fast-paced book. And I think it's going to be a uh, should turn out to be a good movie if somebody makes it. Thank you. Hi, this is Rajiv Menon, uh, the author of Thunder God. Uh, it's really exciting to be in Chennai. I haven't come to this city in a while, and I never thought I'd be coming here as an actor and launching my book. Uh, it's been a very great, informed and uh, you know well-read audience, as I would expect from Chennai. And it's been great. I had a great time doing this. It was uh, really nice to have uh, Mr. Ram Kumar here as the chief guest. Uh, I worked on his production, so he knows me as an actor, and I know him as a producer. So it was interesting for both of us, you know, to to sit and have this talk about about my book. And uh, he was genuinely, he was very happy for me. And uh, I'm glad. I'm really glad to be here. And it was uh, it was a really nice evening. So that's interesting because I'm sure you've uh, done a lot of uh, research, and that's how you came up with names of Susa and uh, his father Dias and mother is Gaya. They the uh, Dias Indra's father here, he says, is the lord of the devas. And uh, the interesting thing in Zoroastrian religion, if you you know what the religion of the Parsis is, like we have the devas and the asuras. The Zoroastrians think that the devas are the villains and the asuras are the good people. It's the opposite way in Zoroastrianism. So that's why you base that. And that, that's not, now Susa is interesting now in modern day Iran. Susa still exists, but it's known as Sushan or something like that. It's a small city with a population of over 20,000. It's there. It's, it exists in Iran yet. The city which he's mentioned about 3,000 years ago. So I think uh, that, that, that's the link to the Zoroastrian religion might be with the Devas and Asuras. Yeah, uh, in Zoroastrian, uh, in the Avesta, the book of the Zoroastrians, uh, Indra is also listed as a demon and uh, he's called the demon of apostasy and you know, the destroyer of culture and destroyer of cities. So I think it was because he was a warrior and he was, uh, it was a savage time, so I think he deserves that epithet that, they got, that he got in Iran. <laughs> Another thing in the, uh, interesting about Indra is, is not only in all the Indian languages, he is known by different names in uh, Chinese, Japanese, Malay, Thai and Burmese. So you got a big audience to read your book. Maybe you have translated all these languages <laughs> and you can do your movies or television series, all the languages, because Indra, like Rama, is known in all these languages. Yes. Uh, in fact, I think uh, he's, he's, he's very popular in the Thai and... Uh, yeah, and even in the Buddhist culture, because there's a lot of mention of Indra in the in the Buddhist texts. So that's uh, good. And uh, so you set this story like we think, like in 3000 BC, or what? What, what sort of period do you think this? We it's we should imagine this movie is uh, with this uh, book is set in. I actually didn't want to, you know, go out on a limb there because uh, what Western historians define time as, and what the Hindu calendar is, is very very different I mean they, they have intervals of time they talk about yugas like we, they talk about civilization post the ice age which is around 10,000 BC but here you talk about many ice ages and you know many many civilizations that were there destroyed and started again so the Hindu cycles are a little uh, uh, difficult to to you know peg down in terms of when you're writing a novel in English or trying to convey that to an English speaking audience Please don't, I, I hope you're not sounding too high funda about history and time and all that. The book doesn't have so much of uh, this sort of high funda thing. It's a straight entertaining adventure. It's uh, it's uh, rollicking. If, if you like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom or Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, that's what this book is about. Although it's about Indra, it's like the Raiders of the Lost Ark. You, you, uh, you say about Ishtar. You talk about Ishtar. Ishtar, I know there was a movie made with a name also, it's supposed to be an ancient goddess, but uh, is, do, do you think that Ishtar had any connection with the, you know, Vestal virgins or the virgins in uh, Greece or the Devadasi system of Hindu temples? Uh, Ishtar, uh, many say, is, was a very powerful, it was a time actually, Indra is one of the first uh, proponents of this whole patriarchal religion that, you know, that has come in now into, it, uh, into India and it still, it still exists, we are a patriarchy in terms of a culture. And uh, during that time, there were very, very powerful matriarchal uh, 
societies which were surrounded by a goddess, whether it was the Isis, Isis cult in Egypt, or you had you had Ishtar in Mesopotamia, you had Freya in the in in the north, and uh, Bihava Shakti, uh, this thing in in India. Uh, so uh, Ishtar actually was a character in a, in the Mesopotamian uh, epic Gilgamesh, which uh, is a very very old text again. And uh, I found her very interesting, so I decided to bring her into this, uh, into my story. It's uh, Ishtar, I'm sure some of you all might know. It's like a mother goddess. We have that thing in our culture, the mother goddess. So she's somebody who is supposed to have been living at that time when Indra was born. And he's uh, described Indra straight away, like I said, like Conan the Barbarian. He's born strong with blonde hair. So he's already selling it to Hollywood now. <laughs> Indra with blonde hair. So. Yeah, actually, I uh, I had to think about that because I knew I would be getting very strong reactions on that. But uh, I think he was uh, from the from that region where, and uh, he is the so-called poster boy of the the whole Aryan uh, this thing movement. So I think uh, that's why I decided to go with blonde. Yeah, you might be right because uh, if you all remember, uh, I, I'm just going out of subject, but it's something I. You, you remember seeing Lawrence of Arabia? So when uh, the Turks capture Peter too, and he, he says, I'm a Turk, and he's blonde hair. So he asks him, are you Circassian? Because the Circassians, the Turks were ruling, are supposed to be with blonde hair. So that's how I thought you got Indra with blonde hair, might be his <laughs> Circassian. It's, uh, I don't want to talk much about the story, because I'm sure you got, you, you're going to do a trilogy, and might be this might turn out to be the definitive work on Lord Indra. Might be after hundred years, people. I hope people don't take this as definitive history. It's fiction. But uh, you've done a lot of research on the move and the, and the battle scenes and the way you have described everything. It's really very interesting. I think people should go through the book. And um, uh, that, that's my reality. thing. I think you uh, you started touching on a person with the wearing uh, you know having a blue throat with a trident in his hand, without mentioning names. I'm sure these characters might come in your, will they, these, all these interesting characters come in your next two books? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, I guess you know who I'm talking about, the man with a trident with a blue throat. He's not mentioned his name, but Neil Kant is definitely going to come in the next book, I'm sure. Yeah, he, he, he does appear through my book. My second book is about uh, the Rakshasas. So he does. Uh, he does appear in it, uh, and and through the other book, I'm a I'm a devotee of Lord Shiva. So I've uh, been I've tried to keep that reverence, <laughs> but I've used him in the book. Okay. My opinion of Indra was that he was always a bit of a loose member. The word member being the important one, as far as the Hindu mythology was concerned. And <laughs> so, why Indra? That is my first question. <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, the thing is, uh, that was a fascination because he's always been uh, depicted as a sort of a philanderer, a coward, you know, that, that, that's been his depiction in Indian mythology. But he's also said to be the king of the gods. So if you had to get to the king of the gods, you must have done something right. So that was where my story, I started exploring the story, you know, like, uh, and I discovered that he was a god that went out of fashion. He was a warrior, it was a brutal time, it was like... Uh, there was a lot of uh, genocide. I mean, I think our civilization has not been very, uh, it's not been a very rosy ride up to here. So, I think Indra was a, was from a very brutal and a very barbaric time. So maybe that's why he went out of out of fashion. You know, when other gods came in. And uh, you know, did you debate on any other deity or a character before you came to Indra, or did you straight away hit upon him in a moment of inspiration? You know, actually, I've, uh, throughout literature, I've always been uh, attracted to characters that, very tormented characters with doomed destinies, you know. Mm. Like Captain, Captain Ahab from Moby Dick, or Sidney Carton from Tale of Two Cities, Absolutely. Or, you know. Mm. So that's been my, uh, that's the kind of heroes and the kind of protagonists I like to talk about. You've got a Bengali streak in your actions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Malayali, I think. Uh, ah, well, it's very similar. <laughs> Not very far away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, because of my Calcutta background, they keep telling me in my house that I've got a very, uh, you know, fascination with the morbid, you know, the, <laughs> the decaying and things like that. So, I'm sure I can understand that. So, uh, you hit upon Indra straight away or did you look at somebody else and then come to him? Actually, it was, uh, I, I was more interested in writing about that period at that point. And then, you know, like, 
when I did my research, I realized that Indra was the poster boy of that period, you know, Actually, like he was the consummate conqueror and the, you see, of course, there were the Alexander and Baba and all followed him in terms of, uh, followed that path, but he was one of the pioneers, he was the, one of the first to.